We are big fans of efficiency at Modus Create, which is why we love Ionic. Now that Ionic supports React, this stack has become so much more beautiful. Today, I'm going to walk you through adding Ionic to your React app. I'm going to use Create React App and I'll replace it with Ionic components. So we're going to split this into two parts. One, we are actually going to create a very simple application for coffee brewing. Awesome. In step two, we're going to you know, pick it up a notch and create tabs. Tabs require routing, so we're going to go over both tabs and navigation and routing, which is going to be a little bit more advanced. In part one, we are going to instantiate a Create React app. And then we are going to replace the components that we get with the skeleton and add a few more. Our goal is to have a selection for coffee. It's going to be espresso, macchiato, and flat white. And we're going to have a big button that is going to say bro. It's going to be very simple because our goal is to actually introduce Ionic into a React app. I'm sure you're going to have fun, so stick around. All right, so first step is actually creating a React application. And I'm calling it Ionico, just because I love thinking outside the box. Okay, we have it. Now we add Ionic. So Yarn, add Ionic React. As simple as that. Okay, let's open this app in VS Code. Okay, we have two things on the screen. On the left-hand side, we have code. And on the right-hand side, we have a browser with the same application running. Ionic comes with predefined semantics for describing applications. For example, Ion app is meant to be the, the root element of an application. So let's start with adding Ion app and we're going to replace the, uh, the initial div class name equals to app with Ion app. Okay, to do that, I'm going to start with importing Ion app from Ionic React. Okay, and as I said, I will replace this div with Ion app. When I save this, the right hand side is going to reload automatically and let's see what we get. Okay, it's the same application, but let's make sure that Ion app has been added. So I'm going to open the console, actually the elements tab of development tools, and I'll go to root, which is the root element for the React application, and I actually see Ion app. It's been added. Everything else is under Ion app. That's beautiful. Mission accomplished. Now, I'm going to do something else. I see header on the in the code, I want to replace that. I'm going to add ion header, and I also want to add a title to the application. Okay, so we are really talking about mobile, right? Mobile apps. So usually mobile apps have a little title at the top. So that's going to be in the header. Ionic has its own ion header. When I press enter, because I use VS Code, this dependency is going to be added automatically into the code. That's beautiful, that's magical, but just so you know that I'm actually not adding them manually anymore, I'm going to rely on the IDE to add the dependencies into the proper import statements. I'll do that by selecting ion header from the dropdown. You can see ion card header, ion list header, and I'm going to use just the ion header. Okay, as soon as I press enter, we can see that it's been added to the import statement. And I'm just going to use ion header. So if I just replace this, let's see what I get now. All right. Let me get rid of the elements. And I have the white page. And that's because I actually am not using any of the CSS that was predefined. I just removed that class name. I'm fine with that. But the one thing that I am not fine with is that the majority of content here is in the header. I expect content to not be in header. I expect it to be in some kind of main element. Right now, I want to actually remove this. You know, I'll keep it for a bit. And inside the header, I need a title. Before I add title, I need to add the toolbar, which is going to be kind of the container that's going to be up top in the header. That's called Ion Toolbar. All right. And inside Ion Toolbar, I want to I want to add the title. And check this out. The name is Ion Title. 
as easy as that. So we're talking about a coffee brewing application. I'm going to call it Smart Brewer. Again, thinking outside the box. I saved it and there it goes. The title is shown properly. That's beautiful. I already mentioned that Ionic handles a lot of our mobile experience. So let's put that in action right now. Let's take a look. So right now we see a toolbar with the title that's aligned to the left. And that's very normal for Android devices. Since we are using Chrome, it's detected as an Android device because it's not Safari. So let's try to trick it into thinking that it, this application is being executed in a Safari. I'll do that by toggling device toolbar right here and making sure that we have iPhone selected and I'll reload the app. All right, now we see something that's more uh, iOS specific. The title is in the center. So if we executed this application in the mobile browser, we would see uh, the title aligned to the left on Androids into the center on iOS devices. This perfectly aligns to uh, the design specifications of each uh, operating system. Our next goal is to contain the main content into appropriate element. Semantically for web, we have the main element. In Ionic, we have ion content. So this really encapsulates the main content. I'm gonna use ion content on the remainder of our actual body. Let's see if this changes anything. Whoops, you know what happened? There's nothing left on the screen. Somehow I lost all my content because I added ion content. How ironic is that? But you know, I actually wanted this disaster to happen because I didn't do one thing. Um, first and foremost, Ionic is built on web components. As web components, they may miss something very crucial for any web kind of appearance, which is CSS. So there is a little bit of CSS that we can include. Actually, there are maybe three, I'm gonna call them tiers of CSS. There is something that's absolutely critical. We have to include one CSS file and I'm going to import it. Where? Inside this JavaScript file as a module. It's as simple as that. Okay, right under this here, I'm going to import the core CSS. And my content is back. That's it. But you know what? Because this core CSS is really, you know, global, I'm gonna move that outside app.js. You know, I don't wanna this file to just grow too much. So all these global CSS, CSS that is not uh, application component specific, I'm gonna move outside, I'm gonna go back to index.js. All right, so index.js came with create react app, it's right here. I'm gonna open it and I will put that CSS right here. Okay, let's go back to app.js, remove it and make sure everything works as expected, and it does. I promised three tiers of CSS, and you're gonna have them. Okay, so first is the core, you gotta have it. Okay, there is a second kind of, I said tier, because there is more than one CSS module to include, and I'm gonna include them right now. Okay, I just added a few CSS modules, normalized, structure, and typography. So these are going to help just, I wanna say normalize the, the web, normalize the HTML that we use inside the application. So it looks a lot more, you know, the same on every browser. So it kind of, uh, we get pixel perfect applications on both devices. I recommend having this here. It's unlikely that it's gonna clash with your design system. It's very useful to have this. Now, the third, tier or group of CSS modules may be more Ionic specific. You know, this really gives the Ionic look and feel into the application. You don't have to use it. I'm gonna add them just so they are in the project, just so, just so we can enjoy uh, the proper Ionic look and feel. Okay, feel free to remove some of those uh, in your applications. You don't have to copy this because the link to this uh, whole example is in the description below. 
Okay, let's go back to app.js and let's work on our application a little bit more. Okay, at this moment, I really want to get rid of the content that we got with the application Skeleton, um, all this HTML. Uh, I'll get rid of this and I'll start adding my own content. Okay, this is a coffee brewing app, so I need a brew button, right? And I'm going to add it right now. But first, I have to delete all this, okay? Once I delete, delete this, I'm going to remove uh, the stale imports. Okay, that looks clean. And I'm going to add a button. Ion button. You know, it's really easy to remember. And I'm going to call it bro. Oops, I didn't add ion button into the imports. I didn't follow my little workflow. Now it's fixed, but this doesn't look right. Bro is a small button and I really wanted to expand. And I'm going to expand this button by using expand property or attribute. Well, now I'm mixing two naming conventions. Obviously in HTML web components, people like to say attributes in React is properties. So I'm going to use one of those. Uh, I'm going to say expand is going to be full. So I want this button to expand full width. There you go. This is exactly what I wanted. This is good, but now I want to add the selection, the coffee selection. And for this, I'm going to use segment buttons. So a segment is usually just a container, right? A container that contains some buttons, right? So I'm going to use um, segments that are going to be espresso, macchiato, and flat white. For this, I'm going to start with the segment. So ion segment is the container that contains a few buttons. And you know what? They are called ion segment button. As easy as that. And the first one is, as I said, espresso. I'm going to copy these, uh, this line twice. Second one is macchiato. That's a hard one to spell. And flat white. Just so you know, flat white is my favorite type of coffee. So next time you see me walking somewhere downtown a, a city, uh, that's my favorite coffee, just so you know. All right, we got exactly what we wanted. You know, this is still <laughs> iPhone kind of look and feel, uh, which is great. If we disable this, I'm going to disable it for a second. Um, I just disabled the entire device toolbar. I'm going to reload. And wow, we have Android look and feel. If you go back, reload, we have iPhone look and feel. Now, you know, as you can notice very clearly on the iPhone or iOS look and feel, none of these are selected. You know, that's really not possible because I have to brew something. I can't brew nothing. So I want to make sure that one of these is selected. And that one is going to be my favorite, flat white. Let's see, checked. All uh, right, you know, um, VS Code is beautiful. Ionic is also beautiful because they play well together. Ionic is built with TypeScript, so there are a lot of you know types already built in that come with the um, exports, right? So uh, inside VS Code or any uh, rich IDE, you're going to have actually pretty good IntelliSense or CodeSense, whatever that's called. Okay, now that this is checked, all right, when I Reload the application, flat white is checked automatically, so I cannot brew nothing. I'm going to brew one of the types of coffee. I'll actually stop using this. I'm going to go full width so we can see everything on the screen. This takes us back to Android, but that's totally fine. Flat white is still selected. Brew is a little bit close to um, the segment button. What could I do here? Obviously, I can create a spacer in CSS, but I'm not really satisfied with my semantics right here. Okay, I have content, and the content is you know, the main area of the application. Now, there is another area, and those of you who have experience building mobile application, you're going to be familiar with the term page. Uh, so we have page, which is basically uh, meant to be used for just views in global. Page is something that you get after routing to a, a specific route, right? So a page is a whole, is a content that we want to see. That's going to be content without any navigation. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, an eye on a page. 
I'm, I'm using it right inside content because this is content and this application has just changed. The brew button is way down to the bottom and this is exactly what I needed, exactly what I wanted. There is plenty of space for the rest of the app in the center and my brew is down where I needed it. Now I'm not gonna build anything in the center. I'm actually going to conclude part one. In part one, we learned how to import Ionic inside a React application. Um, we learned about the basic application skeleton and some of the main components that you're gonna need in your applications. The semantics is important and I hope you're gonna use it. It's gonna help you, you know, uh, down the stretch. In part two, we're gonna learn more about add and navigation and routing. That's gonna be a little bit more difficult than this thing, but I trust you're gonna nail it. So stay tuned. Uh, I suggest you give this a try just to get you know, some experience. You, you dip your toe in the water and come back to part two of this tutorial. And before you go, we have a phenomenal video on how we use Ionic React together with serverless functions for full stack development. Take a look, take a look at our other videos and make sure you like and subscribe.